When we design a digital controller using direct digital design, we first discretize the plant and then design a controller in the discrete time domain. We have previously looked at discretizing the plant and we have developed the procedure to do this for plants that can be described by a continuous time transfer function. In this video, we look at the discretization of a special type of plant that has a constant time delay. Such a plant is also called a system with dead time. The continuous time plant for which we want to find an equivalent discrete time plant model is described by this transfer function, which consists of the transfer function g of s times e to the power minus tau ds. The transfer function e to the power minus tau ds corresponds to a constant time delay of tau d seconds. Similar to the general case we looked at previously, the plant is preceded by a zero order hold circuit and the discrete time signal u of k is converted to the impulse train formulation before it is applied to the input of the zero order hold. The plant output is sampled to produce the discrete time plant output y of k. We wish to find the discrete time transfer function ghog of z that describes the same behavior from the discrete time input u of k to the discrete time output y of k as for the system with the continuous time plant. To find an expression for the equivalent discrete time plant, we use the procedure developed previously where g h o g of z is given by 1 minus z to the power minus 1 times the z transform of the continuous time plant transfer function divided by s. If we redefine the time delay as tau d equal to n times t, where t is the sampling period, then we can rewrite this expression as shown here. For the case where n is an integer, e to the power n t s corresponds to the de uh, delay of n sampling periods. We can now use the delay property of the z-transform to write the z-transform of the transfer function with the delay as z to the power minus n times the z-transform of the transfer function without the delay. We therefore add a pole at z equal to 0 for each sampling period delay present in the plant. If the delay is not an integer multiple of the sampling period, then the discretization becomes much more complex. Refer to the textbook for this case. Let's now work through a simple example to illustrate the idea. Consider the continuous time plant given by the transfer function 1 over s plus 2 and a time delay of 1 second. The sampling period is half a second. This example is the same as the one we worked through in a previous video except for the time delay that has been added. The time delay is 1 second, which can be written as 2 times the sampling period. Therefore, n is equal to 2, which we substitute into our expression for the discrete time plant. We now take the time delay of two sampling periods out of the z-transform and calculate the z-transform for the system without the time delay and after some manipulation we arrive at this result. We covered the last two steps in more detail in a previous video. When we plot the poles on the z-plane, we see that there is a pole at 0 0.368 as before, but because of the two sampling period delay, there are now two additional poles at z equal to 0. The ease with which we can model time delays in discrete time systems compared to continuous time systems is one of the advantages of using discrete time models for dynamic systems.